it, it's not just that we're talking about allegorical language, all right? And I think that's where the the flat earth people think that they have a strong case is that they're taking the Bible literally. Listen, I'm very much a biblical literalist. I really like to take the Bible literally. In fact, people have accused me of being too literal, all right? But I think we can take it literally, and if we take the time to understand the vocabulary, understand the grammar, then we don't yeah. have to we don't have to you know do the cop out and say well this is an allegorical passage okay you know there's some allegory oh, in there but but most of it it's it's literal okay and and so here is a passage where if we take the time to understand the language that's in the text then we can understand these things without having to result resort to a flat earth the original word for circle is a kug from old testament 23 20 eight a circle now the meaning is a circle as something that surrounds it is a from a word that means 23 28 to describe a circle then we are told to compare this to a similar word meaning the same intended use of a root word 2287 which means to move in a circle this movement is also similar in use to 2283 to revolve the word trail might seem a little bit complicated, but it is necessary to get the full meaning of the particular word. In following this trail, the composite slant or connotation in no way signifies something stationary or a flat de desk. It is a pattern of movement in a circle or revolving. This is talking, take, telling us of a sphere that moves. You don't just look at one word, you follow the trail that is set before you. Vine's notes on Strong's numbers is one source I always use when I can for it expands it even further to a complete cultural etymology of the word use for everyone everywhere. In this case, the word chug has no variation or connotation used in the Bible to suggest anything flat or stationary. The opposite exists. The claims made by many of the armchair theologians are not sound doctrine and not following the true intended meaning of this word, regardless of the credentials of fame or what have you. Chug, 2228, a primitive root. It says to compare to 2287 to describe a circle. You go to 2287, a primitive root, and then it says to compare with these other two. We'll get that in a minute. Properly, to move in a circle, specifically to march in a sacred procession, to observe a festival, by implication to be giddy. Okay, obviously that last definition plays no part or role in this, but but obviously they're marching or moving in a fixed set position. Now, you compare it to the other two that they tell you, we get a further understanding. Um, chaga, from an unused word meaning to revolve properly, vertigo, figuratively fear. Obviously, it's something that is revolving. Okay, that's Correct. really the point that's being made. And I have just a little graphic that I want to show some people to give you the idea of what this word is all about. It's a revol it's revolving, okay? That's what it's talking about. So here we have in Isaiah 40, 22, it says, it is he who sits above the circle, the word hug in the Hebrew, of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out hanote, the heavens like a curtain, and spreads vayim tachim, them like a tent to dwell in. Well, uh, we find this again in Job 22:14. Thick clouds cover him so that he cannot see, and he walks above the circle of heaven. There's the word shamaim. Okay, so he's above the 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 chug, whatever that is. We'll get to that in a second. Proverbs 8:27. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a chug on the face of the deep. Well, let's go. Let's just take a look at this for a second. The original is chaga. And it means to revolve. This is from uh, Brown Driver Briggs. Uh, a terror, a reeling in terror. So it's, it's an origin from an unused root meaning to revolve. Now I've got the little reel to reel here just to give you a visual example of what it means to reel. Okay? And it's the same thing in Hebrew. It means to revolve, to go around. That's the idea. It's something that's going around. It's making a circuit. This, this Another word that's related to it, chagag, it's that that's the actual root that we're coming from to hold a feast hold a perpetual f uh, festival make a pilgrimage keep a pilgrim feast celebrate dance or stagger 
Again, it's this idea of going around, making some kind of a circuit, some kind of a circle. It's not just a, a, a stationary circle. That's the point. It's not a stationary circle. It's something that is reeling, something that's going around, that's revolving, that's moving. So to keep a pilgrim feast, well, what is that all about? Well, again, if you didn't live in Jerusalem, then you'd have to go down to Jerusalem, or, well, up to Jerusalem, as it were, because you always go up to Jerusalem. It's a mountain. You have to go up to Jerusalem. And then after the feast, you go back home. You're making a pilgrimage. You're making a circle, a circuit, right? Because you're walking there, and then you're walking back, there and back again. That's what's happening. It's too real. This is from Hug. To encircle, encircle. See that? It's to go around something. To encompass, to go around. Describe a circle, draw around, make a circle, or to encircle, to encompass. So this idea, it's not a stagnant circle. As I said, there's no such thing as a two-dimensional circle, or even just a circle in a 3D world. Okay? So now the Earth, from any angle, if you're out in space, which I do believe there is space, despite what some people would have us believe, there really is a solar system, there really is a universe. Okay? You guys, come back to Earth. There really is space out there okay and if you're god and you're looking down at the earth guess what it kind of looks like a circle all right so that's one way that you could look at it all right so when you have that understanding it gives you a different perspective than what we have before okay and what we have before is that it i mean from what the flat earth people are telling us is that this word just means like a circle like the earth is a you know a pancake, okay? But really, it has the idea of going in a revolution. That's what we're talking about. That's really the idea here. And that's how you could have, when somebody goes on a pilgrimage, what do they do? They start from their home, they go to the pilgrimage site, and then they come back, right? That's the that's the hug. Okay, well, this can only be classified as one of at least three possibilities. One, Overt deceit and a lame attempt to justify preconceived biases. Two, willful ignorance as a result of excessive cognitive dissonance. Or three, just plain stupidity. As far as I'm concerned, Doug, Shane, and Jim are all going to have to fit into at least one of these three categories. And since I know at least two of these guys fairly well, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and suggest that they are victims of the second option. Willful ignorance due to excessive cognitive dissonance. Because they should know better. Now Jim calls us armchair theologians and puts up a picture of a monkey working on a novel. Nice. And if you go back to Doug's original video, he actually prefaced his diatribe with, "I don't like to, you know, necessarily, uh, you know, tout my uh, my degrees and all that stuff. I figure if you know something, you know it. If you don't, you don't. But again, because this is such a sensitive topic, I just want people to know that I actually did study Hebrew. Okay, I went to the Hebrew University in Jerusalem." I studied three years of modern Hebrew, Biblical Hebrew, Aramaic, Akkadian, Greek, Arabic. All right, so I actually did my homework. All right, and it's not just to say, "Oh, you're so smart." It's just to say that I I might know what I'm talking about here. I I actually know how to use this the resources. I actually know some of this stuff just because I studied it. All right. Now this is quite crafty. While he tries to feign humility here. This is meant to elevate his status above everyone else through a perception of higher intelligence due to indoctrination, oh, oh, I mean higher education. It's the whole, I'm smart because I studied this in school, so you should listen to me routine. Now I want you to contrast this mentality with how I start pretty much every lecture I give. It's my hope that you guys will fall into that third category, <laughs> although I wouldn't be surprised if many of you fall into the second category. Either way, I'm going to suggest that you do not believe a thing I say. I'm going to tell you up front, do not believe a thing I say. Don't believe me. I'm just a dude reading books, right? That's all I am. I, I'm not your teacher, although I may be teaching today. I'm just a, a, a dude reading books who has, I have what I consider to be well-informed opinions, but that's all it is. That's all it is. Uh, it's my opinion. None of this is thus saith the Lord. Although I will be posting scripture, 
Um, but really, uh, it's, this is Thus Thinketh Rob, as it pertains to these scriptures we'll be going through uh, out the weekend. And like I always say, you know, I, I am a dude just reading books. Some people would say I'm a crazy dude <laughs> reading books, uh, w worthy of the tinfoil hat that I'm wearing there and my lovely bride in support of me with her <laughs> hat as well. Uh, but like I always say, look, don't believe a thing I say, all right? Don't believe me. Take notes if you want to listen. You know, um, I'm just sharing with you what my research has led me to believe. It doesn't mean it's true. Uh, you know, and 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 quite frankly, uh, as I continue to dig, I may change my views on some of these things. But uh, what I'm go going to be presenting to you today is simply my my current understanding where I am right now, what I believe uh, these various subjects are, uh, the conclusions these subjects are leading me to. So as I always say, do not believe a thing I say. John said the same thing. Look, I'm just a student just like you are. You know, I happen to be standing up here and I'm, I'm maybe doing some teaching, but I don't consider myself a teacher. I consider myself a student with a lot of opinions <laughs> that I just happen to be vocal about. <laughs> uh, all right, but you know, we are told to prove or test all things, right? Hold fast that which is good. Prove it, test it for yourself. I'm just gonna share what I feel uh, I've been learning along my journey. Now at this point some of you may be sick of it or consider it to be somewhat cliche uh, because I do it over and over and over again. But I mean it. I consistently tell you not to believe me and to do your own research. Because if I just tell you something, you have an option. You could either believe me or write me off as an idiot. But if I can get you to think about something, and then you go look it up for yourself, you research it for yourself, and then you find out, wow, that's the way it is, well, then you're the idiot. <laughs> you can't call me an idiot anymore because now you're one of them. You've discovered the same thing I did. And that's why I tell you, don't believe me. Go look this stuff up for yourself. But it appears Doug is counting on you not doing that with this subject. I think he's hoping that you won't look it up. Because if you do, I mean, you're t he's going to be easily proven wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, I mean, too bad for him. We're not just going to take his word for it. We're going to go look this stuff up for ourselves. And we're going to do it right here on this video. Now, both Jim and Doug, and likewise Shane, would have us all believe that hug comes from a word that means to revolve, to reel, and by implication to orbit. <laughs> but is this true? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Let's go to blueletterbible.org. Here we have the word hug, masculine noun, and it comes from this word here. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, pay attention to the way this is worded right here. The root word etymology, this word, this noun, comes from this word right here. Okay, now the definition of this word is circle, circuit, compass. It's an uh, outline of biblical usage. Circle, circuit, compass. Vault of the heavens is another um, implied meaning here. Strong's definition of hug is, again, from 2328, which we'll get to in a minute. That's the verb form. A circle, circle, circuit, compass. Now, Doug says it doesn't mean that, but yeah, it does. <laughs> now, this particular lexicon right here inserts sphere. And I'm going to suggest since this book was published in the 1800s, that that is a translator bias. That is not what the word means. Nobody in the ancient world believed it that way. They're inserting that into the definition because these people believe in the 1800s that we are on a globe. But I'll prove to you that uh, nobody in the Bible believed that. Okay, so we see here that this noun, hug, comes from a verb it's the same word, but it's the verb form of the word, 2328. See? Hoo, same word. Verb form. It is a primitive root. This is the primitive root right here. Doug wants you to believe that this is the primitive root. No, it says compare this primitive root with this other word. The word circle, the word that is translated circle, hoog, the noun, comes from this primitive root right here, the verb, which means to encircle, encompass, describe a circle, draw around, make a circle. The call form is to encircle, encompass. Again, it's the verb form right here. 
That same lexicon says to describe a circle or draw a circle. That's the verb form. Noun, circle. Verb, draw a circle. It's not rocket science, okay? But it says right here to compare this primitive root with this other one, 2287. So we go to 2287, and we got hagag. It's a verb also. It is a primitive root. Now, this is the word that means to uh, keep a feast, to celebrate, keep a solemn feast, dancing, holiday, reel to and fro, to hold a feast, hold a festival, make a pilgrimage, keep a pilgrimage, blah, 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 okay, and to reel. Now, this word here, hagag, is, in fact, a primitive root itself. Now, it says to compare this primitive root with 2283. So we go to 2283, and that could, that's the noun, haga from an unused root meaning to revolve. Compare that with 2287. So we go back to 2287, and we're right back to the primitive root, hagag. <laughs> okay, so you're in this little circular loop right here comparing these things, all right? But this, here's the point I'm trying to make. Hagag is, an, uh, is in and of itself a primitive root, and so is hug. It's simply telling you to compare the two. It's not telling you that who comes from the other one. Who, the noun, circle of the earth, comes from the root word verb form, hug. So hug is the originating word, not hagag. It's just simply telling you to compare the two. Because they, why are you comparing the two? Let's go back to hagag. Uh, it also says to compare 2328. So... Let's click on that, 2328. Uh-oh. So we just got ourselves in a loop here. If you're going to say one, if you're going to make the claim that one is the root for the other, instead of just doing what this tool tells you to do, compare roots, then all of a sudden you just made the root word of Hagag a circle. You see what I'm saying? The, the only reason they're telling you to compare these is because the concept of something circular is being conveyed. If you're talking in a verb form, you got hug, the verb form, to draw a circle, i.e. to inscribe a circle, to take your fingers and move them around in a circle, creating a circle. Or if you go to hagag, to dance in a circle. You got a bunch of people go around in a circle, hence to dance, keep a fast <laughs> feast. Okay, the idea of leaping and dancing in a circle. That's why you're being told to compare the two. The, the function of this word is to convey a shape, not a motion. Now, these guys want to say that, no, the comparison has to do with motion. Revolving, reeling, orbiting. It's all about the motion. I'm saying it's about the shape. They're saying it's about the motion. Which one's correct? Well, let's look at the rest of Scripture. What does the rest of Scripture have to say about it? That might give us a clue as to how we should look at these words. You've got over 60 Scriptures describing the motion, the movement of the sun, moon, and stars. You have zero biblical precedence for showing the earth rotating or orbiting, i.e. in any form of circular motion. There's nothing in the scripture that conveys that. Furthermore, we have the previous testimony of Job and Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, both of which preceded Isaiah, by the way, stating that the circle was inscribed into something. Proverbs 8, when he established the heavens, I was there when he drew a circle on the face of the deep. Circular. He made firm the skies above, so on and so forth. Here's an interesting one. He has inscribed a circle on the face of the waters at the boundary between light and darkness. How do you inscribe an orbit? <laughs> Hold that thought. Let that one bounce around in your noodle for a while. We'll come back to it. 
When you consider the numerous scriptures that reference the heavenly luminaries in motion and combine it with the many scriptures that describe the earth as being set on a firm foundation of pillars, fixed and not moving, plus the fact that Isaiah's circle was inscribed, if we were to employ the principle of Occam's razor, clearly the position that requires the fewest assumptions is that of the circular still flat earth. Everything else is wishful thinking at best. And that, thi- and that wishful thinking requires constant mental gymnastics, as we will see over the course of this series, in order to justify the spinning heliocentric globular earth mentality. And once again, you can't say that Hagag is the primitive root of Hug when it tells you that Hagag is a primitive root and Hug is a primitive root. And we're simply told to compare them. But Doug and Jim are both trying to manipulate you, the viewer, the listener, into believing that the origin of the word hug is hagag, to revolve, to reel, to orbit, according to them. And that's just simply false. Sorry. Nice try. But just in case you don't believe me concerning the Hebrew and what I just showed you, (laughs) let's take a look at how everybody translated this scripture and see if anybody shared the view of these Bible scholars are trying to push on us. We'll see if anybody, anybody, translated the word hug with an understanding of orbital rotational movement. Okay, let's go to Bible.cc, shall we? And look at Isaiah 40.22. And I'm using this function right here. You you can also use the parallel function right here for English. These are all the English Bible translations. Okay, Uh, New International, circle the earth. New Living Translation, circle the earth. English Standard, circle the earth. New American Standard, circle the earth. King James, circle the earth. Holman Christian Standard, circle of the earth. International, he who sits on the disk of the earth. Net Bible, oh, that's interesting. They come up with horizon, which is not what the word hoog means. Uh, New Heart English Bible, he who sits above the circle of the earth. God's Word Translation, enthroned above the earth. They just throw the word out all, all together, I guess. Uh, JPS Tanakh, 1917, Circle of the Earth. Those, are, That's Jewish. That's the Jewish guys right there. They, you know, might know their own language. You call me crazy. Call me crazy. I know. That's insane for me to suggest such a thing. But these uh, Jewish scholars who took their own Hebrew scriptures and turned it into their English version, the JPS Tanakh Bible, oh, they said circle of the earth. They didn't say reeling, rock and rolling, orbiting, spinning, globe sphere earth. They said circle of the earth. New American Standard, vault of the earth. That's interesting. They threw the word vault in there. Jubilee's Bible, Jubilee Bible 2000, Circle of the Earth, King James 2000, Circle of the Earth, American King James, Circle of the Earth, American Standard Version, Circle of the Earth, Dewey Rhymes Bible, Upon the Globe of the Earth, oh, that's interesting, Dewey Rhymes, oh, that would be following on the heels of uh, the Copernican Revolution, so that doesn't really surprise me, especially since this is a, a Catholic Bible. Copernicus' theory of a heliocentric universe was well known at the upper strata of the Catholic Church in his lifetime. While he preferred his theories published after his death, he ultimately agreed to publish his manuscripts on the persistent appeals of high church officials. Catholics were not first to reject Copernicus' views, for they themselves admit, opposition was first raised against the Copernican system by Protestant theologians for biblical reasons. The Catholic Church advanced Copernicus' heliocentric model constantly urging him to spread it abroad, together with other theories that opposed the sacred scriptures. The necessity to change public conception from an accurate belief in a flat, enclosed earth to a false belief grew slowly. With sapient baby steps, the whole world would become amenable to the final delusion of an alien invasion under the first woe. The Catholic hierarchy had the perfect opportunity to lay groundwork for a global deception to culminate in this Earth's final generation. This deception required a globe Earth spinning throughout the vast reaches of space, space inhabited by aliens and other sentient life forms. These contrivances created doubt in the Bible, 
putting science ahead of scripture, which advises mankind the earth is enclosed and unmoving. They also place the Creator far away from His creation by presenting a universe unimaginably vast. To engineer this transformation in belief, the newly created Society of Jesus, commonly known as the Jesuits, became the agents of change. The Roman Catholic Church was waging war on the new Protestantism believers having come from their own system, while Copernicus was resisting appeals to publish his theory of a heliocentric solar system. Under the approval of Pope Paul III, the Jesuit order was established in 1540, and Copernicus dedicated his book, Revolutions of the Heavenly Bodies, to this very same Pope. This newly formed order, the perfect instrument to implement a clandestine operation for the Pope of Rome, began changing the public perception of the authority of the scriptures, the earth and the creator, through the Copernican Revolution. Following Copernicus' publications, it is probable the Jesuit order has produced more astronomers than any other demographic in Europe. That, ostensibly, a religious order should produce so many scientists should cause surprise. However, as these scientists have focused nearly exclusively in but one area, this gives us reason to question. Upon rejection of the sacred scriptures, which teach us Earth is a fixed, immovable object under a protective covering, a nefarious foundation was laid. Atop this were built perversions designed to force humanity to doubt the very word of our father Yahuwah. With the biblical geocentric model rejected, a new explanation was required. A globe Earth, its orbit of the Sun for millions of miles every year, illimitable realms of space with billions of galaxies, each composed of billions of stars with worlds innumerable. All this became necessary to explain the new heliocentric model of the universe, and mankind, over a short time, lost his divine significance. Thereafter was created an environment within which the writings of Charles Darwin found a receptive audience. Once science showed the Bible wrong, the disparager then diverged from her religious guise altogether. Anything suddenly became possible. There was nothing above question, including how the Earth seemed to appear in the vastness of space with all else and the existence of extraterrestrials. The Big Bang Theory is, today, the leading explanation about how the universe began. At its simplest, it talks about the universe as we know it, starting with a small singularity, then inflating over the next 13.8 billion years to the cosmos that we know today. Priest Andrew Pinsent holds advanced degrees in theology from the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, as well as a doctorate in particle physics from Oxford. In January 2015, he wrote, being both a priest and a former particle physicist at CERN, I am often asked to give talks on faith and science. Quite often, young people ask me the following question. How can you be a priest and believe in the Big Bang? To which I am delighted to respond. We invented it. Or more precisely, priest Georges Lemaitre invented the theory that is today called the Big Bang, and everyone should know about him. The author of the Big Bang Theory was none other than the Jesuit-trained priest Georges Lemaitre. Follow from cause to effect. 1. Without a globe Earth circling the Sun through the far reaches of space, we do not have the Big Bang. 2. Without the Big Bang, we do not have evolution. 3. Without evolution, we are more likely to accept creation as an act of intelligent design by a divine creator. The Roman Catholic Church does, in fact, accept evolution. So that's interesting. Darby translation, Circle of the Earth. English revised version, Circle of the Earth. Webster, Webster, hmm, Circle of the Earth. Captain Definition Man himself, Circle. Hmm. World English Bible, Circle of the Earth. Young's Literal translation, Literal translation, Circle of the Earth. Okay, now... Let's get really crazy. Let's go ahead and click on multi <laughs> and go past the English. Let's just see what other people had to say. 
and we use uh, Google Translate to uh, see what comes out to in English here. Uh, Afrikaans, okay, let's check that out for my friends in South Africa. Afrikaans. <gasps> Afrikaans, circle of the earth. Ooh. Albanian. Let's see what the Albanians have to say. Circle the earth. What do you know? Now, I know the Arabic one comes up with something really bizarre. I'll just show you so you don't think I'm just trying to avoid it. This one says something like uh, football or something like that. Yeah, he who sits on the football ground. <laughs> Interesting translation. Uh, Bavarian, let's see. What does the Bavarian want to say? Uh, actually, it's not giving us... Uh, we're not given the opportunity to look up Bavarian, so we'll skip that one. Let's look up Bulgarian. Circle the Earth! Huh. Chinese, it looks like. Let's try them. Let's see what happens here. Earth Great Circle! Wow. These are all Chinese, so I'm going to assume they're probably saying the same thing. Let's look at Croatian. Circle the Earth! Check. Let's check the check. Circle the Earth. You guys start to see a pattern here? I'm not going to go through all these. You can go through them. There's a lot more to go through. Check for yourself. Check multiple languages. Okay? They're all saying the same thing. And they're not saying anything about reeling and orbiting and rotating. Going in a circle. As in motion. They're describing a noun. A shape. Circle. Not sphere. None of these guys, except for Dewey Rhymes, came up with anything even remotely indicating a sphere here. So it's only extreme hubris to suggest that Doug, Shane, and Jim are the only ones who have this right, and all of these other fine scholars and biblical translators have it wrong. Not one of them gave us any indication that Isaiah meant to say that the earth is spherical or revolving, reeling, orbiting, or in any other form of movement. Rather, they all indicated the simple, straightforward, circular nature of our world in the mind of the Holy Spirit-inspired authors of Scripture. Period. And, and while Dr. Michael Heiser may not agree with this personally himself, he doesn't believe the earth is a circle, he believes the earth is a sphere, he at least has the intellectual honesty, the integrity to show what the biblical authors meant. And they didn't mean globe. 